G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. In today's video, we are gonna be doing a bit of a spin-off off of my good friend Drew's series, looking at the first ever Eagle side that Adam Simpson coached back in 2014, going through it line by line and seeing where each player is now. Now this concept may sound familiar to you because earlier in the year, Drewzy and I did do one of these videos on Damien Hardwick and the first ever Richmond side that he coached. And Drewzy has subsequently done a Nathan Buckley video as well. I like the video concept so much that I wanted to do an Adam Simpson and an Eagles one. I said to Drewzy, can we do one of those on your channel or should I do one for mine? And he's like, I don't wanna do Eagles content, do it on yours. So here we are. But while I've got you, do go check out his channel in the description and check out the series that he's got going on over there. So as we know, Adam Simpson joined the West Coast Eagles at the end of the 2013 season when John Worsfold stepped down. I've done a really in-depth, long documentary as such, detailing Adam Simpson's road to the 2018 Grand Final. So I will plug that, go check that out if you get a chance as well. But 2014 was an era of transition and change under the new coach, Adam Simpson. We actually saw four players make their Eagles debut in this game. The game took place at Patterson Stadium or Domain Stadium, whatever it was called, and the Eagles absolutely belted a young Bulldog side by 65 points. Mark Lacroix had five goals and 27 possessions. I think Matthew Rosa had 34 touches as well. And it was a pretty one-sided performance, but a memorable one for Eagles fans as it was Simpson's first game in charge. So as I suggested, we're gonna go through the team that took the field that day line by line and see what they're doing these days. So in the back pocket, we've got Jamie Vinnell, my fellow Bunbury man after being cut by Melbourne, joined the West Coast Eagles for his first game in round one of the 2014 season. For me, Vinnell, maybe I was a bit biased. I always thought he was a really likable player, really damaging and uh, had good ball use, but I think perhaps a lack of defensive accountability meant that he got dropped just about every second week. Vinnell was in and out of the team for a few years there. He got delisted at the end of the 2016 season. He then went to join Swan Districts for a year before crossing to Victoria and joining the Eastern Football League. At full back, we've got Darren Glass, the then skipper, and unfortunately, Simo only saw half a season out of Darren Glass before he retired. He would retire after 270 games. His body just kind of gave up on him, and this move sort of signaled one of the last key pieces of the transition to being a younger Eagles side. After his playing days, he did coaching stints at both Adelaide and Hawthorne, but now Darren Glass is back at the West Coast Eagles as their list manager. In the other back pocket, we've got the key defender, Mitch Brown, who was tall, inconsistent and injury prone. He had a fair bit of potential being a former first round draft pick, but battled injury through his whole year. And at the end of 2016, he was delisted. He was allegedly offered an Eagles contract for the 2017 season, but the Eagles subsequently withdrew it and pursued Sam Mitchell instead. On the halfback flank, we've got Shannon Hearn. And this one, of course, is a little bit more of a happy story. Of course, Shannon Hearn took over as captain after Darren Glass led the club to a grand final in 2015 and then returned in 2018 to lift the cup and become the club's third premiership captain. He'd been all Australian defender in both the 2018 and 2019 seasons, and he's still at the West Coast Eagles as a best 22 player, although he is no longer formally captain. In 2021, he overtook Dean Cox as the club's record games holder with 290 odd games. And at this stage, it looks like he will be playing on in 2022. At center half back, we've got Eric McKenzie, who went on to win the John Worsfold medal, the only one of his career at the end of that 2014 season, and unfortunately ruptured his ACL during the 2015 preseason. He battled injury pretty much for the rest of his career, didn't quite return to being the player that we knew he could be. Obviously missed out on the 2015 grand final and of course he was still on the list in 2018, although I think he had formally retired due to injury, so he missed out on both clubs grand final appearances. On the other back flank, we have Xavier Ellis who joined the club alongside Adam Simpson as an unrestricted free agent from Hawthorne and he is the second Eagles player to be debuting in this game. It wasn't a long stint at the Eagles, but Ellis really did add a lot of value to the club in his time, adding a lot of experience and composure to a team that was kind of adjusting to a new game style. As many expected, his body would eventually give up on him and he retired during the 2016 season and is now a pretty prominent media personality in Perth where he still resides. In the first wing position, we've got Matthew Rosa who added a couple of years of pretty good consistent football under Adam Simpson, although he kind of fell out of favor and was picked as the sub in both the 2015 prelim and the grand final. As such, he requested a trade to the Suns, I guess seeking more opportunity in the Eagles replaced he and Sinclair with Redden and Jetta. He added 39 games to his career tally at the Gold Coast Suns before retiring, doing a brief stint at the West Coast Eagles as a coach and is now the football operations manager at Peel Thunder in the Waffle. In the center, we have Matthew Prittis, who of 
of course, won the Brownlow in the 2014 season and came second in 2015 to Nat Fife as the club made it all the way to the grand final. Pretty's put together some really good football under the Simpson era, but by the end of the 2017 season, fell out of favour and the club more or less pushed him into a bit of a premature retirement. Tragically, he would miss out on the Eagles flag just one year later. On the opposite wing, you have Andrew Gaff, who at the time was just 22 years old and yet to enter his prime, but you could say he definitely did that during 2015, taking out the club's best and fairest award. He's won two All-Australian jackets since 2014, in 2015 and 2018, before seriously considering a move home to Victoria at the end of the 2018 season, when he missed out on the grand final due to suspension. Thankfully, he signed with the Eagles on a long-term deal after that and remains a key player in 2021. On the half-forward flank, you have Sharad Wellingham, who ended his second season on the Eagles list after being traded from Collingwood a year previous for a first-round draft pick. After some indifferent form in 2014, Wellingham kind of reinvented himself as a rebounding defender and was a crucial part of the Eagles' Weagles web that saw them make the 2015 grand final. Unfortunately, he only added two further seasons at AFL level to his tally before being delisted and signing up with East Perth to play for two more years. At centre-half forward, you have Josh Kennedy, and frankly, I think we all know where Josh Kennedy is. Since 2014, he's won three All-Australian jumpers and won two Coleman medals. He was, of course, a 2018 Premiership player and during that year overtook Peter Sumich as the club's leading goal kicker. He remains in the side in 2021. He's playing to a great level as we saw against Richmond last week. And if he wants, I'm sure he could play on again in 2022. On the other half forward flank, you have Chris Masson, a player who was much maligned through large periods of his time at West Coast, but was no doubt an important part of the 2018 Premiership team as a defensive winger. At the end of the 2019 season, the Eagles were eliminated by Geelong at the MCG, and that would be Chris Masson's final game at AFL level as he was subsequently delisted. Masson is currently playing for the Perth Demons in the Waffle and is doing a fair chunk of club media work for them as well. In the forward pocket, you have Mark Lacroix, and Mark Lacroix arguably had the best years of his career under John Worsfold, but he remained a fairly important goal scoring option for the Eagles under Adam Simpson as well. His form sort of lapsed towards the end of the 2017 season, but it came back pretty strongly in 2018, and he was an important Premiership player that year. After the Eagles won the grand final, Mark Lacroix hung up the boots to join the club of having your last game in a flag win. At full forward, we've got Jack Darling, who at 22 years of age was still coming into his prime as a key forward for the Eagles, but where we sit today, he still remains one of the better key forwards in the competition. Since 2014, he's been a three-time Eagles leading goal kicker, and in 2019, he won an All-Australian jumper as well. At 29 years of age, he's still definitely still in his prime, still a key player for the Eagles, and probably is one of their most important players. In the other forward pocket, you've got Jamie Cripps, who, like Wellingham, was enjoying his second season at the West Coast Eagles after requesting a trade from St Kilda a year prior. He would enjoy a breakout season in 2015, entrenching himself in the best 22, where he's pretty much remained until now. He was of course an important part of the 2018 flag winning side and remains an important player for the Eagles going forward. In the ruck position you've got Dean Cox and like Darren Glass this would be Dean Cox's final year at AFL level retiring at the end of 2014 as the then club's game record holder. He would spend a couple of years as an assistant coach under Adam Simpson before transferring to Sydney where he remains an assistant coach still. The first on bowler is Scott Selwood and he was a pretty important cog under the worst fold era but kind of found himself out of favour under Adam Simpson. Injury was definitely a big factor in that, but he was actually dropped after the 2015 qualifying final and didn't make the team for the 2015 grand final. Subsequently, he exercised his free agency rights and joined his brother Joel at the Geelong Cats. Unfortunately, injuries continued to plague him at Geelong as well, managing just 34 games in four years before retiring and joining Collingwood as a development coach. In the final field position, we've got Luke Shuey on ball, and Shuey would have to be one of the more decorated players on this entire list since the 2014 season. During this period, he's won two best and fairest a Premiership medallion and a Norm Smith medal. He's the current captain of the West Coast Eagles and despite battling some soft tissue injuries over the last couple of years, he remains a crucial player for the Eagles going forward. On the first bench position, you've got Nick Natanui and it still seems odd, even though it was 2014, to see Nick Natanui's name on the bench. While Nick Natanui is now considered by many to be an elite ruckman, it did take him a while to get there. He would rupture two ACLs during the 2016 and 2018 season, causing him to miss the best part of three seasons, including the 2018 Grand Final. In 2020, it was great to see him have a career best season, taking out his first John Worsfold medal and winning his second All-Australian jumper. He remains at the peak of his powers and is a crucial player for the Eagles both now and for the next three or four years. 
Also on the bench, you've got Elliot Yo, the third player on this list so far to be making his Eagles debut after being traded from the Brisbane Lions for a second round pick at the end of 2013. Back then, Yo was a strong aerial marking halfback flanker with elite speed and some midfield potential. He'd be thrown around the field for a few years, spending time as a half forward as well before being thrown into the midfield in the post Matt Prittis era. He'd be all Australian in both 2017 and 2019 and be the Eagles best and fairest in 2017 and 2018. While he's another player that certainly battled injuries in recent years, he's close to, if not the most important eagle on their list. Next up, you've got Dom Sheed. Dom Sheed would be the fourth debutant in this game, although he'd be the only one making his actual AFL debut. After a slow start to his career, Sheed unexpectedly became a best 22 player in his second year in 2015, before subsequently falling out of favour and was in and out of the team constantly. That was until Andrew Gaff's suspension at the back end of 2018, when he came back in and turned in some really A-grade performances. And of course, we all know what happened in the 2018 Grand Final. She pulled off one of the most clutch moments in Grand Final history and remains to this day an important midfielder for the West Coast Eagles. The final bench spot is Callum Sinclair. And I must say, it's strange to see that the Eagles opted for three Ruckman in this game. Sinclair was in his second season at AFL level in 2014 and battled inconsistently and was constantly in and out of the team as well. In 2015, however, he managed to displace Scott Lysette and earn a spot in the 2015 grand final team. Sydney then needed Ruck, they came hard for him and he was traded in a straight swap for Lewis Jetta. He remains on the Sydney Swans list today, having added 89 games to his career tally. But that's it guys, that is player by player, the 22 that Adam Simpson first fielded as coach of the West Coast Eagles. As you can see, many of those players still remain quite important players for the Eagles in 2021 and beyond. Thankfully, not too many names on that list went and left the club and had more successful careers somewhere else. It is quite interesting to look at that team and see on the emergency list both Brad Shepard and Scott Lysette, both important premiership players in 2018. But anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you're enjoying this format, well, I wish I could say that I could do more like this, but it's Drewsy's idea, so go to his channel, check him out, subscribe to him, but I do appreciate you watching anyway. So if you haven't already, please like the video, subscribe, and we'll see you somewhere very soon, somewhere on YouTube. Cheers.